Here we are, Bernie in Brooklyn. Sounds good. This is, this is, is this, do you recognize this place, Brooklyn well, of course College? I, do. I um, you know, I grew up in Brooklyn. Uh, I graduated James Madison High School, yeah. a few miles away from here. What did you do as a kid? Our life centered around playing ball. We played basketball. James Madison had one of the best teams in the city. We played football, we played s softball. And I'll tell you something, yeah. this is interesting, Mark. Yeah. In those days, and I think it was, it was a good thing, kids played it without adult supervision. Yes. So we made up our own games. And we worked these things out ourselves. I learned a lot about democracy in the schoolyards of Brooklyn, New York. It was a great experience. And I spent the year here before I went to the uh, University of Chicago. How much did it cost you to go to school uh, here? M much cheaper than it is today? I would say that is an <laughs> understatement. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, what people forget is Brooklyn College, or the City Colleges of New York. I mean, these were good schools, and yes. these are good schools. So many famous people graduated from around here. Colin Powell, Ruby Dee, Ira Gershwin, Henry Miller, Jonas Salk went to City College, and he discovered the vaccine for polio. How much did they pay to go to college? In those days, public colleges and universities were virtually free. So that's not a radical idea. That's the point. It is not a radical idea. You have countries all over the world today who provide free college because they want to invest in the future of their nation. They don't want kids to be going bankrupt when they, you know, get out of school, $50,000 in debt. Yeah. And it used to be the case in the United States of America. So no, this is, what I'm proposing is not a radical idea, that's for sure. You grew up in this neighborhood. W was it an immigrant neighborhood? Largely it was. Many of us were the sons or grandchildren of uh, immigrants. And the main shopping area was King's Highway. And if you went shopping there, you would see people who had serial numbers on their hands, right. on their arms, yes. which was from Hitler's concentration camps. Yes. So you have this beautiful pluralism in, in your worldview. Would you say that that was informed by Absolutely. your experience here? Because there's no more densely populated area in America that has so many different kinds of people, right? Yes, the strength of this country is the fact that we have so much diversity. And I think we do better when we are a people who appreciate, who love, respect people from all over the world who bring their own values and traditions and become part of the American experience your father. What did you learn from him? Those key things that you carried into your life. He was aware that coming to America and making enough money to live in a better standard of living than where he came from, what for other people may have seen not to be much, but from where he came from, it was a significant step up. And what about your mom? Uh, my mom died young. She was 46 when she died and spent a lot of her love and energy on her two sons. Uh, and I think because the family did not have a lot of money, never kind of did some of the things that she dreamed of doing. What would you think if she saw you now? Oh, God. Would she be proud of you? Well, more than proud. I think it would have been an unbelievable something that they would have never conceived. You know, when you come from a rent-controlled apartment, you know, you don't talk about the kids becoming president of the United States. That's not, that's not in the discussion. It's a beautiful discussion. <laughs> and so from here, you went to Chicago. You were there during the Civil Rights Movement. You were deeply involved in the anti-segregation movement right. there. How does this white kid decide that he's going to stand with his black brothers and sisters and put his body in harm's way? Because you were arrested, weren't you? Yes, I was, but I don't want to go overly dramatic about it. Right. I mean, at the same time, there were people getting their heads busted in, in the South. That wasn't our case, but it was a sense of justice. You, you were so effective when you became the mayor of Burlington. Against all odds, you stopped these real estate tycoons from displacing hundreds of working families from their homes. And, and, and you built this, this progressive coalition, and, be, and because of your legacy, Burlington is now the first American city to run 100% on renewable energy. People just, they don't know this. And how is it in the 90s, when the Republicans controlled the House, somehow you formed these partnerships and passed all of these amendments on corporate crime? 
IRS accountability, child labor, green energy, supporting the troops and their kids, and auditing funds given out by the Fed. I mean, nobody ever audited the Fed since it was established. You got so many amendments passed, they dubbed you the Amendment King for crying out loud. Do you know what you make me feel? That all of my ideals as a young person can actually grow up with me. When I look at you, I say, all of the ideals of him as a young person grew up with him. He never, he, he didn't have to give that up growing well, up. Uh, Is that true? Well, here's what I think. Don't, don't give me too much credit. Well, no, I'm, I, just, but I'm it, relating to you that all right, way. But here's what it is. <laughs> One of the beautiful parts of this campaign is your dreams and my dreams. You may have thought that there were very few of us. Turns out we're the majority of the people in this country. And people now, through this campaign, I think, are sensing that, that they're not alone, and that's a big deal.